Carlos. Okay, so the point of that question is what? Everybody's got, Everybody's got a story. Everybody is here to tell a story. And we all have a story. Okay, so that's a little bit about you memorizing me. Let me now reflect on you. First of all, you're amazing people with an unbelievable heart. You have exceptional passion, okay? But may I offer one tip of advice that, I, that I'm picking up as a, as a tone. And a lot of people talk about their why, okay? And oftentimes within a why, there's a who. But I must remind you that when we get on an airplane and they tell us when the mask falls, who do we put the mask on first? <coughs> Yourself. So I want you to remember that you are the most important person in this room, in that seat. And the height of maturity is taking full responsibility for you. In order for you to lead others, to serve others, to care for others, to wish better for others, you've got to take care of you. I can tell you in my experience that oftentimes the people that live their lives in crisis management are always worried about somebody else. You must remember who you are. And that moms, you deserve time for you. Your reading, your exercise time, your time for you, whatever it is. All I'm saying is, is that you've got to remember that the why that you have can be filled with who. I want to do it for my daughter, I want to do it for my mom, I want to do it for whatever cause, community, church, whatever service calling. But you're only going to get there if you can absolutely take full responsibility for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, we can't take the mask and put it on somebody else because there may not be time for who? Us. So how many of you have ever heard of the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Yeah. Okay, i got two hands in the back. <clears throat> All right? Seven Habits. Who has a copy of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? So Stephen Covey is a professor that teaches psychology at the university that my wife went to. My wife actually had him as a professor. This book should be in every library because the seven habits of highly effective people teach you about how to be more effective. And can anybody name the first habit? Okay. So usually what I do is I ask audiences because in America, most of the people can say they have the book, they've seen the book, heard about the book, whatever. So Stephen Covey was voted as Time Magazine's 25 most influential people in the world. Now, if I were to wish you to be a better recruiter, or a better person, or better at your business, I would wish that you would know the seven habits. The seven habits of highly effective people are truly empowering you to be better in all areas. And habit number five, is a brilliant habit because it's called seek first to understand, then to be understood. That was the number one requested seminar in the Stephen Covey Company, the Franklin Covey Company, that any company ever uh, requested. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. So if I'm a recruiter and I try to just stand up for me because he's a big guy and I can't hurt him, okay? <laughs> if, if, if I start to recruit him, and I get in his airspace like this and show oh, <laughs> oh, <it's just> like, <laughs> If I violate his airspace and I don't know him well, how does he feel about a friend right now? Right? Okay? If I'm sitting here telling him about, look, we create millionaires every day, this is gonna be the greatest thing in your life, and all I'm doing is just talking, 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 how's that relationship gonna go? Not good. He's gonna be kind of moving that way, isn't he? <laughs> right? So versus if I met him on the street and I said, hey, how you doing? Where are you from? What do you do? How long have you been doing it? If I'm asking a lot of questions, what is he then likely to do? Ask back, right? That's relationships. So thank you. Give him a big hand. He's an amazing person. <laughs> Seek 
for us to understand and to be understood is an incredible principle, husbands and wives, teachers and students, right? Uh, coworkers, you know, boss, employee, every, every aspect of life. Try to understand. If you're going to recruit somebody, why would you spend an hour trying to recruit them if they would have no interest in doing this? Okay? You have to find some commonality. First of all, you're only going to work with people you like, right? If they're cranky and negative people, sometimes you have to have a friend act to me, and you got to say goodbye. <laughs> you just got to cut them off. You, you don't have time for negative people. Okay? You have to be centered around the positives. So why do I set it up like this? Because this session, this session of 45 minutes, I'm on the clock, I can say that in 40 minutes already. All right? It's about story. The power of story. And everyone in this room has a story. If you're here today for the very first time, there's a story about how you got here. About how somebody saw something in you. Okay? In my life, I try to create stories every day. I try to create stories by meeting people, and if I like who I'm talking with, maybe I extend the next level of the friendship to an invitation to learn more about my business. Could be a webinar, could be a three-way call, could be a conference call, could be a one-on-one -on -one presentation, could be a business meeting like this. It could be numerous different uh, approaches, if you will, to recruit somebody. So here's, if you're, for those of you who are taking notes, there's five points to a story. And you kind of already got them because we'll go through a little bit later about how this is important in your meeting, in your home meeting, or on a stage like this. So I'll give you my story in a 30-second version, okay? My name is Dan McCormick. I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and I used to build tennis courts. I was making $5 an hour. I heard about this incredible concept called network marketing. I wanted time in my life to do good things with my family. And the greatest thing that's ever happened to me as a result of New Skin is I've been blessed to build an organization around the world, and it now gives me the opportunity to travel the world, see the people, play with my family anywhere I want, anytime I want, and this is just the beginning. Woo! Woo! Now, you heard me a little bit earlier tell it in an expanded way with the tennis court story and where I went to college and how long it took me to finish college, all that kind of stuff, right? So there's different ways to tell your story. You've got an elevator, or you actually call it a lift, right? You get on the lift, you're on floor one, by the time you get off of floor five, you have to tell your story to the person. So um, I remember I was in San Diego many years ago, and business, and meeting people, that just, I just love meeting people. So I get in the elevator in San Diego, and it's just me and this other guy, and I said, how you doing? He says, great. I said, where are you from? He said, Atlanta, Georgia. I said, that's fantastic. I said, I just started building my business in Atlanta, Georgia. And he said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm in the nutrition and fitness business. I said, I wonder if you would know anybody that would help me start my business in Atlanta. <coughs> he says, you know, I have a friend of mine that's a Pilates instructor, and she's in between jobs. She might be perfect for that. Now, that's a true story. That Almost word for word on how that elevator pitch went. Is that difficult to do? No. Is that intimidating? No. If he would have said no, would I have been hurt? No. No. Just had fun with people, right? Was I really building building my business in Atlanta? No. 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 But I want to. Okay. <laughs> True story. Okay. Now, uh, my wife and I are at dinner in Newport Beach. This is probably 15 years ago, and the waiter. You know, there's many tables. Here we are sitting. We're overlooking uh, the ocean, so to speak. And the waiter was really good. I could see how good he was, and he was good with this table, and he would check on this table, he'd be back with our table, and he just moved so eloquently from table to table, and he handled everybody's business very, very well. And I saw his name on his, on his uh, name plate, right? We should have those next time we have a meeting here, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know your names. Mm -hmm. And it always goes on one side. Your right side because we shake hands usually with our right hand, and that's what comes forward. Okay, just a little tip. <laughs> just a little tip. So I said, um, I said, Mark, um, I've been watching you here. I said, you're really good at this. Have you been doing it long? I think he said, yeah, 12 years. And um, 
I said, have you ever thought about using the skills that I see here to leverage your life to make more money? He says, no, what, do you, what, do you, what is this, like Amway or something? <laughs> Has anyone ever heard of Amway? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I said, well, do you like Amway? And he said, no, not really. And I said, no, it's nothing like Amway. <laughs> okay, it's another direct sales concept for those you haven't heard, right? And I said, look, you're really busy right now. When do you have some time to talk? He said, Wednesday morning. Not forget, I was, this must have been Friday or Saturday night, I'm out there with my wife having this dinner. Wednesday morning came along, and I forgot to call him because I was on the golf course. So what did I have to do? I had to wait till the next Wednesday morning because he works two jobs. Long story short, I ended up following up with him, did a three-way call with some other people that had a similar background. We got him sponsored in the business. He put his sister on the product, and they used product for a long time, but he never joined the business. But the point is, how did I make a new friend? What was the first thing I said to him? I complimented him. Exactly. Who said that? Well done. Okay. How hard is it to compliment somebody? Right? Tell them they, you know, uh, you can give any numerous comments about how someone runs their business, the kind of car, the way they look, the way you, you know, you, with their attitude, their contribution, their service. There's so many ways to compliment people, right? So think about that. Now, that's all part of creating a story for being a better you in New Skin. But there's five things that are specific that I've already woven into this entire tapestry of telling stories. Your name. If you're on stage, always self-identify yourself. The reason you want to self-identify yourself is it gives you a start to a rhythmic way to tell your story. Does that make sense? Hi, my name is Dan McCormick. I'm from Seattle, Washington. So your name, where you're from, what your background was. I used to build tennis courts. I was making $5 an hour. You were a massage therapist. Is that how you say it? Okay, figure out name, where you're from, what you did as an introduction. Why new skin? And then the best part. Just those five things. Very simple, so you can do that in a pretty expedient manner, 30 seconds, right? Or you can expand the story and you can say, if you're hosting a meeting and you're trying to warm up and meet and, and just let the audience feel that you care. I'm not in a hurry when I start the meeting. I want the audience to, to know that this is what we do. We tell stories. So be a professional storyteller. Don't complicate your life. Learn the stories of the people in the room. That's why they're going across the stage telling you their story. Maybe you'll meet somebody who was the young man that was the fitness trainer. Where did he go? Right here. Fitness trainers, right? Thank you. Okay. So maybe you meet somebody tomorrow that's in the fitness training business and say, "Funny story. I just met. What was your name again, please?" Chris. Chris, who's a fitness trainer, and he found our business to be exhilarating. It gives him more time for you and the opportunity to still be in the health and fitness business. So know the story. You might know somebody that's an esthetician, or somebody that works in a salon, or somebody that sells cars, or somebody that sells real estate. There's any numerous stories that go into your uh, repertoire to be able to repeat as a way of communicating because people don't always buy your words but they buy your feelings behind those words and so it's a very important thing knowing how to tell your story so who wants to tell their story let's pick on you mm -hmm. you've already done it once? <laughs> we're going to give you, you want to bring your notebook for the five things or do you, can, you, can you remember all right this is really simple. Now, I want you to imagine it like this. When we're doing a meeting and we've got lots of people on the stage, the clock becomes our nemesis for our guests, right? We don't want our guests to nod off. We don't want them to fall asleep. We don't want energy to drop. So our story needs to be like machine gun style. Because if we can get more stories across the stage, we have a chance to relate to more people. People, exactly. Okay, so you want to do your five points? Real quickly, you got 30 seconds. Just, just, but just, it's okay if you don't do it correctly. No one's going to leave. There's no big dogs in the back. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Mary, and I'm from Inverness. And my background is Kelly Jackson. I've been doing it since I was 15, so it's far too long. Um, yeah. My new skin, um, I've had a background in beauty products for a few years now. New skin because 
I want you to please begin with, and then I started getting involved in the background and how good the company is and what good the company can do for changing the world and helping people like this. And the best part is, just give me a best part is, so the audience, when you say the best part is, for them, she might say something that's perfect for somebody that's out there just saying, I wonder if that's me, right? So what's the best part for you? Time and financial freedom for my children. Is that a beautiful thing? Yeah. <laughs> So you can practice with her at home? Okay. <laughs> you got more relaxed, right? Chris, come on up here. Let's get this fitness story down to 30 seconds. Five points, right? Just Okay, repeat it. Point number one is what? Two, three, four, five. Got it? Give it a whirl. Yeah, so my name is Chris, 23, and I'm from Middlesbrough. My background is in personal training and health and wellness. So why new skin for me? Because it's unique. It lets me work with amazing people. I get to travel. I get to do it in my own time. And it also is going to give me time financial freedom to do more what I want to do, which is work out. And that's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best part. Yeah. So he likes to work out, right? So we're not going to have a push-up contest with him. <laughs> Unless he's willing to tell me he's willing to challenge me, it's no hand push-ups. No hand push-ups. <laughs> go, 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 go. Okay, so what do we learn about what we've already done here for a minute? Anybody, give me some feedback now. Does this feel better as we're going across the stage when everybody already knows what they're going to say? You, the host, know that they're going to be 30 seconds. You have the microphone, you don't give it to them. If you give the microphone to them and they get nervous, we could be hearing about their Aunt Tilly who grew up on a farm in Glasgow in the 1700s, and because the farm was bad and had lead in the soil, it may not work out for all of you. You understand what I'm saying, right? So you hold the microphone, you control the meeting room, you run the meeting. Now, um, can you tell me again who's your sponsor? Rachel? Where'd she go? Okay, Rachel, come on up again. All right. Rachel had the greatest day of her life when we were on Millionaire Training, right? Okay, now what I want you guys to also get good at is when you recognize people on stage, you recognize the people that brought them here. So you brought her to that to this stage today. Would you tell us your story just briefly? Give us the 30 seconds. Your name, where are you from? Background, new skin, and best part. Um, <laughs> so I'm Rachel Ficard, I'm from the north east of Scotland, a little village called White Hills. Um, my background is in beauty, um, I was a nail, well I am a nail technician. Um, why new skin, time for natural freedom, great product, loads of opportunities to travel and meet new people. The best part is helping others. Now, Rachel, do you still use the photo that you showed me in Salt Lake City? Mm -hmm. I mean, this lady looks beautiful, does she not? Her skin just glows new skin. But that wasn't the case for you a year or two ago, right? No. Amazing, because of the mud mask? Yep. The mud mask is her favorite thing to sell. So, just a fantastic story, right? Mm -hmm. So, who is here for the very first time to gay again? Who's our first timers that are visiting us today? Would you please stand up? Just stand up for me. Can we give them, can we give them a good round of applause? Okay. Keep standing, thank you. Keep standing. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want your sponsor that brought you into the business or brought you to the meeting here today, would they please stand? And can we recognize them? Give them a hand, please. Isn't this great? Fantastic. The point of this is it's a story, is it not? Every one of you has a story. Thank you, you can sit down and give yourselves a big hand. You're amazing. I love to recognize the people that are here for the first time, but the people that brought them here. Now, how many of, you, of the ones that are here for the first time, how many, uh, raise your hands again, if you will, please. Okay, the ones that are here for the first time. How many are thinking that you've learned enough now that you kind of want to be a part of this team? How many are already thinking that today's kind of the day you're gonna join us? Okay. Now, give them a hand, would you please? That is network marketing. Nobody net wishes their way to Team Elite. Nobody net hopes they network. 
And when you have the mentality that every single day you can wake up and meet somebody new, and it won't happen every single day, but you can have the attitude that it will, because nobody should create your weather except you. Nobody should create your attitude except you. It's an inside-out game, right? It's not an outside-in game, going back to Karen's story about comparing. Because if we compare, I mean, I'd be a disaster trying to compare myself to Nathan Ricks. Who would do that, <laughs> right? What a disaster zone. I'd sleep way better not even knowing the guy if I had to do that. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is, it's an inside-out game. Nobody can affect how you feel the rest of this day unless you give them power to. Mm. That's why, where'd my friend go that was explaining the scanner, the scientific aspect of the scanner? Was it, was it you over here, okay? Yeah, we can talk Raman spectroscopy. We can talk 473 nanometers going into the tissue. The blue light's gonna shift because like up on the iPad. The iPad was created by Steve Jobs and his team. <laughs> All this technology and crazy stupid stuff. We can, right, bore them to death. Yep. That's why we tell stories. <laughs> you and I don't want to be nutritionists. If we did, we would have gone to school to do something like that. We want to be people that influence other people's lives for the good, to make them feel better, look better. We are the distribution arm of the 80 scientists on our staff. We let them do that work. And we are paid storytellers. How does your business duplicate trying to be a scientist versus trying to be a storyteller? Mm -hmm. A little different, okay. right? I mean, being a scientist is a tough way to go. Yeah, you can get some people on the product by being smarter than somebody else, but you'd rather persuade thousands to join your team by being a professional storyteller. You can still weave some bullet points in or certain things that you learn from our scientists, that's fine, but the overriding aspect of building your business is through story. Does it make sense? Just go like this with me. Some of you are nodding off and you're kind of going like this. <laughs> Sleepy. Kind of heard that California accent for too many hours here. So what we're trying to do is keep it simple, keep it fun. And so one of my good friends who years ago uh, was actually a team elite with me in New Skin. Unfortunately, he passed away. But he had, a, um, he had a little slogan. And it was simplify, electrify, and multiply. Right? Sometimes people say, well, what's network marketing? I say, well, it's kind of like raising rabbits. You put two of them in a cage, and a while later, you got a big family. <laughs> right? it, just, it just grow all over the place, right? So network marketing, it's like, I have no idea who even in this room is on my team. But it's all big. It's, it's what we call the new skin family. Everybody works together. I mean, it's pretty amazing to hear some of you come and support sidelines and drive three hours to support other groups and stuff like that. That's the heart of the, of the new skin distributor. They want to be a help, they want to be a support. Why do you want to come to meetings? Because you're a story. You're part of the story, you're window dressing. Whether it's sharing your scan score, sharing your product story, sharing your business story. If you didn't recruit anyone to come to the meeting, you still go to the meeting. You go to the meeting because you're part of the story. And maybe you need to hear a story from somebody that's gonna stand up and share that's gonna be key and instrumental in you recruiting the person you meet tomorrow. Does that make sense? really powerful when you think about how it's all woven together. Why would I tell my team in, in the United States to listen to Millionaire Training every Saturday for the last 14 years? There's people that get on that call every Saturday for the last 14 years. I hear the same names coming up because they're there to support distributors that are maybe on their team. They're listening to these principles, habits, and reference points again for the, let's see, we've done 650 shows, I think it is, in 14 years, whatever that is, 50 times 14, 10 years, yeah, somewhere around 600 and some odd shows. So every Saturday we're talking about principles, habits, and reference points. If you went a week, and maybe you didn't go to the gym, Chris, right? How would you feel? I'd be bouncing off the walls. You'd be bouncing off the walls. You wouldn't feel as good, right? Muscle begins to atrophy in a matter of? Right. Muscle begins to atrophy in a matter of days, right? If we don't work out the muscle, it begins to atrophy. And what happens to your recruiting skills if you forget to recruit, forget to sell for a matter of days? Is it a little bit easier to walk past that next guy and say, I don't think I'm going to recruit him. <laughs> she looks too good for me to talk to. I'm intimidated. <laughs> Rebecca, no, her skin's perfect. <laughs> Not going to talk to her. Right? So you just, Rachel, Rebecca, Dan. <laughs> hey, can we take that picture down? We don't need that picture up there. Can we take that down? Okay. So it's a matter of principle that what starts in motion stays in motion.
meetings, stories, conference calls, all assist us in being better storytellers, better leaders. So the word leader, L-E-A, means path. D-U-R, doer, means finder. So are you a leader? Leaders are pathfinders. You're helping other people find their way in the business, and you teach enough people to get what they want, and you're gonna get what you want, right? So for me, I would say that one of the fun things for me, I can't remember, uh, we were having some of the conversations up here about the world of direct selling and network marketing, and one of the things that's fun for me is to talk to other friends that I have that are not in New Skin. And I'll get a call from my buddy Freddie or something like that. I say, Dan, you're always telling stories. <laughs> These are guys that aren't in my business, that aren't going to be in my business. They're just friends in, 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 in competing businesses in, in North America. You know, I went and stayed at a friend of mine's house who has cancer a couple weeks ago in Colorado. Just to go visit him and play golf. But um, I wanted to go visit him because you never know when somebody has a dread disease like that. And I spent some time with him and his wife, and it's like, you're always telling stories, right? I am a storyteller beyond anything. Now, when I call a customer that's using my products, my goal is twofold. Make them feel good about me, make them feel good about new skin. How do you think I do that? Stories. Telling stories, right? So if I called somebody that was using the marine mud mask, I might tell her story or share her picture if I had that handy, okay? I might tell some, any one of your other stories that I heard here today. I might tell them a story about new skin and the development of a new product, okay? I do it and follow up with a customer because like somebody said on stage earlier here today, that since the scanners come out, I haven't missed a day. Who was that? Who said that, okay? okay. You haven't missed a day taking light packs since the scanner came out, is that what you said? Since I got scanned. S since you were scanned, okay. So, the scanner is a reminder for him. But if you have a customer using one of the products in the beauty box, you're the reminder. <laughs> you're the one telling the story. You have borrowed stories for other people, and you have acquired stories. And if I'm talking to somebody about the financial side of the business, if I'm new to the business, I can talk about how I met a ruby, I met a diamond, I met an emerald, I met lapis, I met all these people, right, that have these amazing stories, that come from similar backgrounds, and as I grow up in the business, maybe I acquire my own strength. Maybe I've made my first thousand dollars. Maybe I've made my first ten thousand dollars. Maybe I've made my first million dollars. Whatever the story is, but these strengths change based on your story and how you want it to be perceived. So if I call a customer, I'm telling them a story. Now, do any of you have distributors today that told you they were going to come and did not? <laughs> that happens to you too. <laughs> I thought it was just me. Unbelievable. There's actually people that don't show up. Does that happen to you? <laughs> do people quit on your team? They do? <laughs> oh my gosh. In Scotland, they quit. I thought it was only Americans that were <laughs> Why do you call distributors back on a regular basis? To tell them stories. You're not gonna get everybody, but I never say no to anybody that's willing to take my call because I'm a relationship person. I like to stay involved in the process. So let me tell you a fun little Team Elite story. I have these two New Jersey guys on my team named Ed and Gary DeRiver. These guys are funny, fun, you name it, they are it. They're just a riot. Two New Jersey brothers that can poke fun at each other, that can you know, just chide each other. I mean, it's just a riot to be around these guys. They're quick-witted, the whole deal. But 14 years ago, when we uh, left our previous company, Lon and I, and we came to New Skin, they wanted none of it at all. Nary a phone call. For sure, they were not interested in new skin. But every year I would call and just say hi. We all love basketball. Ed was a basketball referee. Gary was a basketball player, a basketball coach in college. How are you? How's the family? Okay. 
And then I was doing a meeting in Sacramento, California, and it was about 15 minutes before I was going to go down to do my meeting in the hotel. And I thought I'm going to call Ed. I hadn't talked to Ed yet this year. And it was early in the year, and I called Ed. I said, hey, how you doing? And he would tell you the story if he was here, by the way, so I'm not telling you anything out of school. He says, I, I'm, all, I'm all right. I'm like, well, you sound a little, little quiet. He says, well, I'm in a hospital. I had some stints put in my heart today. And I said, man, I'm so sorry. I, I would have never known. Let's hope everything works out for the best. And I said, and by the way, is there any reason why you and Ed and I shouldn't be working together? <laughs> I think I said it just about like that. With all that's going on in the world, is there any reason why we shouldn't be working together right now? And he said, well, let me talk to Gary. I'll call you back. So he called me back, I think, the next day or two. And they came over to the house the following Monday, if I recall. A week later, they flew up to New Skin. Looked at the, they, they had a list of 15 companies to go visit in Utah. Utah is known as the direct selling capital of the world. And they went and visited New Skin and canceled all other 14 appointments. Because when you go to the campus and you meet the people, there really is nowhere else to go. How many here in the room have been to the news, uh, the, uh, the campus headquarters there? It's pretty extraordinary, wouldn't you agree? I mean, it's just hard to imagine. So here's a relationship that through story and friendship evolved. But it didn't take one week, one month, one year. It took five years for me to get them going. Five years? If I would have said no to that relationship or been offended by it in any way or let any turbulence in the relationship of the two different companies parting ways get in the way, that would have cost me a substantial amount of money. But these are great guys. And so if you have people like that that didn't show up today and you're going to call them back, you have a goal. And the goal is to make them feel good about you and make them feel good about new skin. And the way you do that is by stories. You have to be sensitive to the time where they're at, okay? Uh, if you hear a lot of noise in the background, maybe they're at a kid's game or at some event, maybe at the football gym over here, I don't know. But you have to be sensitive and figure out, is this a good time to talk? I always ask that question, is this a good time to talk? Hey, Ed, Gary, how you doing? Great. Is this a good time to talk? You got five minutes? I gotta tell you a story. I went to a meeting today in Scotland. <laughs> And meta. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. Go back to California. <laughs> and I met 300 of the most amazing people. I met all kinds of individuals that have changed their lives as a result of a company that had a dream in 1984. It started with how many products? She said 12 earlier, right? 12 products. They wanted to have all of the good and none of the bad. The bad. And you just developed the story. And you can tell any one story in the room that you heard, that you wrote down, maybe that is close to relating to their age or their career or their frustration or their disappointment, right? So is this kind of making sense on how the whole thing is a story? Every aspect from customer to distributor, from every recognition point, everything we do is not only to recognize the success and the accomplishment of the people walking across the stage, but the newest people in the room that haven't even decided to join us yet are influenced by story and recognition, and it just makes it a lot of fun for everybody. So when you come to our international conventions, you might be blessed to hear stories, like by the thousands, okay, <laughs> that take hours and hours for us to clap and applaud and say, touche, that job well done. Anyone that can walk that stage and me walking across these stages here today deserves a round of applause. So when you're doing that, I recommend you give them a real round of applause. And really, for those that are distributors in the room that have a, a, a need and a reason and a want, because your guest in the room only has the ability to get about 30% as excited as you do, and I'm not talking about standing on your chair and blowing up balloons and jumping up and down. I don't mind jumping up and down, by the way, whoever had made us do that, okay? <laughs> but I'm talking about genuine appreciation 
for someone's efforts because they don't go unnoticed. We want to recognize them and recognize them and recognize them. And we want to just absolutely let all these new people that are sitting in the room hear enough stories and say the following words that one of my team leads said when she saw me walk across the stage many, many years ago. She simply said, I want to be up there. She said, I want to be up there. Now, I like to say, I want all of my team up there. <laughs> okay? I mean, it's nice that you guys really did an amazing job of promoting the event here today. And we like to talk about, in the third week of millionaire training, we call it the art. <coughs> Does anyone know the rest of the title? The art of? <laughs> promotion. The art of recruiting and promotion. So you had the opportunity today, if you in fact knew about New Skin, if you knew my story, but it wouldn't it doesn't have to be my story, it could be anybody's story, but it just happens to be me today, okay? The fact is that the wealthy, and I always tell people to write this down, that the wealthiest people in network marketing master the art of recruiting and promotion. You get to tell people in your passionate voice how strongly you believe that an event like this can change their life. Okay? Your passion and your communication ability to promote. Now look, we like to say that recruiting is a process. How many in the room here that are already in New Skin did it take more than one phone call to get you? Okay, how many more than two? Took more than a month. Look at the hands in the room that took more than a month. How about more than two months? Three months? You get my point. It takes sometimes months, and in my story with the greatest years, right? So these, the process of recruiting usually requires multiple events. Multiple events so they can hear stories multiple times to say, you see, every guest in the room here today has to go through the psychological process that says, this looks simple. I think I can do it. Seems like nice people, great company, but they have to go through that psychological process. If anybody's sitting in this room that just had their hand up, ever went to a meeting and thought, ooh, it looks complicated, looks boring, mm. looks like no fun, looks like a bunch of people that are just, you know, a bunch of ripoff artists and stuff like that, nobody's gonna join. But everybody has to go through the psychological process. It's fun, it's simple, I can do it. And then once they do do it, they've been recruited. Who's the most important person to recruit? Yourself. Yourself. You recruit yourself. You have to know inside, no matter how many people say no outside, you're still going to the top of the mountain. You're not going to let anybody else's attitude dictate your way. So, in conclusion, let's just take the next five to ten minutes and just have a little Q&A session. You can ask me anything you want because we've got the other things to do on the next session, right? Questions and answers for me, and there's no bad questions. How many people have you recruited? How many people have I sponsored personally? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. In, in, uh, it's probably somewhere around 50 in New Skin. Um, Dan, I listened to a call with you earlier in the year, and you said on that call, I hope you remember this because otherwise we're not really silly, <laughs> the best days of new skin is still to come. Yeah. Would you care to elaborate on that? Yes, I would. Absolutely. Okay, so Chris said earlier this year, I said the best days of new skin are still to come. Let me tell you where I got that. Has anyone ever heard of Claire McDermott? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's the founding distributor, right? Craig, Craig, and Clara. And we're sitting in our Blue Diamond. The Blue Diamond party used to always go through Clara's house. So this was, what, 13, 14 years ago, whenever I went, okay? Must have been 13, because Paige and Peggy were with me. And, um, and somebody asked Clara, what's going to happen to New Skin when the scanner is no longer the it thing? And the confidence of her reply was astounding. 
a woman of maturity and success and clarity, just as easy as water off a duck's back, she said, doesn't matter, they'll come up with the next great thing. <laughs> and that's what's happened in my 14 years. The Galvanic Spa didn't take off when it was introduced to this company. It was years. How many years has it been in the, you've been at 19 years? And, and what year, did they come out in 99? I'm not quite sure, but I had it in my home for many years without knowing what to do with it. Exactly, I had it in my home, I never opened the thing, right? <laughs> Until I learned with the European, what, what year? 2001, 2001 year. 2009, yep. German lady, just yep. sister Yep, exactly. So 2001 in Europe came, 2009 is when it took off. Now I don't even know, but I do remember interviewing one of the scientists many years ago about the science and the technology behind the marine, marine mud mass. There's a million dollar piece of equipment up in British Columbia in Canada that takes this mud up in those glacier fields and puts it through to make sure that all the impurities are removed, all the bacteria are removed. When you put that mud on your face for the first time, I was shocked how long that product was in the line before I used it. <laughs> But I, I love that. How many use the marine mud mask? Is that not just terrific? <laughs> right? it's true. So it's a great question that he asked about why the confidence of the future of new skin. Unequivocal no-brainer. There's products in our line and in our catalog today that may be million dollar, multi-million dollar, maybe there's a billion dollar product in that line. But I guarantee you, nobody thought it was going to be toothpaste. <laughs> the percentage of growth, because somebody took a before and after picture, and now you did it, and she did it, and it's on the internet, 15 ways to Sunday, right? There's great products that are in our line. I'll tell you one. I don't know. Do you guys have Rishi Max? Yeah. Do you have Rishi Max? Yeah. If everyone truly understood the story of Rishi Max and the studies behind Rishi Max, and how much you love other people in your life that potentially may have or had breast cancer, there wouldn't be a, a woman in Scotland not using Rishi Max every day. Not one. Unbelievable. Rishi is a mushroom from China. New Skin has the, has the technology on taking that mushroom and cracking the spore there's millions of those spores to get the most active ingredient. And all of the Chinese herb herbalists in China know that reishi is the king mushroom for immune function. Okay? And so reishi max is just remarkable technology for immune benefits. Okay? So how did I get on that? I don't know. But maybe it was through your question. Any other questions? I'm out of time almost. Please, back here. Your name? Christina. Christina? I just asked, have you ever lost faith in the company or the business? And if so, how do you get it back? Okay. Well, I'm going to give a repeat answer on this, but it will be it will be a great way to finish this. So, how did I, did you, have I ever lost faith, and how do you get it back? So, here's the difference between the newest distributor and a team lead. A newest distributor has a distributor uh, invited to the meeting, and the distributor doesn't show up, or the uh, the, uh, the guest doesn't show up. You go home, you talk to your wife, and you say, boy, I, I just don't know if this business is gonna work. You know, Larry didn't show tonight. I'm so excited for Larry. I thought he had all the potential in the world. I thought this was really gonna be good. And I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to stick it out in the new skin. Five minutes later, the phone rings. Hey, Dan, it's Larry. Man, I am so sorry I couldn't come to the meeting tonight. I got a flat tire on the way, but man, tell me what happened. I'm really sorry I missed the meeting. What just happened to my emotions? <laughs> Down here, all the way back up here. Honey, Larry just called, we're in the business. <laughs> See? So the newest distributor can be blown out of the water in an instant. The team elite lets that wash away in a matter of seconds. Minutes, sometimes hours, depending on the relationship, the depth of it, and things like that. But, not that this was a low point in my new skin career. But it was a point in my new skin career. When I flat out said no to travel, I had traveled so much, I think I told you I let my passport expire. I didn't want to be asked to go anywhere. I just wanted to see my grandbabies every day. I mean, truly, I mean, they just light up my life. So 
going to Columbia made me think that there's too many great people in the world for me to think about myself and not travel. And every time I have an opportunity to do something like this, it just invigorates your soul and your spirit for new skin and what it can mean. So what is that? It's story. It's human story. It's about the people. And if it's ever something other than about the people, then we're probably doing the wrong thing. Or we're looking at it or asking the wrong question. So hopefully that gives you some idea of story, how to tell your story, and how to feature other people in your meetings through story and recognize not only the guest in the room, but the sponsor in the room. And uh, just have fun with it on the journey. Thank you so much.